Welcome everyone. My name is Chelsea Kennedy and I'm the communications lead at Kids and Company. Thank you all for joining today's webinar. We are so excited to collaborate with pediatric dentist, Dr. Raylan Chow to provide dental tips for parents. Dr. Chow is a board certified pediatric dentist in Canada and the US. She received a master's degree in human nutrition from Columbia University in 2011 and graduated from the University of Minnesota School of Dentistry in 2015. She now calls Vancouver home with her husband and two precious daughters. Today, Dr. Chow will walk us through everything we need to know to ensure our children establish a good oral hygiene routine at a young age. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen, and we will ensure these get addressed at the end of your session. Over to you. Hi, everyone. Thank you, um, Chelsea, for the opportunity. Uh, to speak with um, all of you guys. And I have to say, I, I really enjoy Kids and Company throughout. My kids um, have been in there since one and a half. And now she turns three. Um, it's really a big, big family. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. Uh, Chelsea, can you just let me know if this is OK? And I'll start. Yes, it's perfect. OK. So um, Chelsea did a really good intro of me. Um, uh, I started an Instagram uh, account called Dear Dr. Tooth Fairy uh, out of passion about a year ago. And recently I just um, am about to uh, kick off my second passion as well. We're starting a clinic uh, in Vancouver. It's called Keto Smile. But we'll dive into the important part today. So I'll skip uh, the portion of myself, but I'll let you see my, my daughters. You'll see their pictures throughout the presentation as well. So just a pretty uh, big broad outline for today. Um, what's baby teeth? What are they? Why are they important? Uh, a little bit of tips about teasing. What are the differences between baby versus permanent teeth? What do we um, see during the eruption um, period. It could be baby teeth from zero to three years old, or for adult teeth from six all the way to 12 years old. Uh, and then why are baby teeth so important since they're going to fill out, right? A lot of people ask me that. Um, <clears throat> and then I'll touch briefly upon baby teeth. How do we treat their cavities? What are the treatment options? Um, and at the very end, we'll talk a little bit about the dietary recommendations uh, from a dentist's point of view and a little bit of tips uh, for daily cleaning. Like how do we encourage the kids so they enjoy the routine? So on the left side, you can see a little bit of picture. The sequence of the teeth coming in usually is uh, the lower front teeth starting uh, around six months old. And then the lateral, which is the second from the, from the midline, and then it jumped all the way to the first baby molar. So usually when you see the baby molar, you'll see a big gap in between the molar and the um, front teeth. That's because the canines, the third tooth from the midline, supposedly uh, should come after the molar. And then around a year and a half to two, they're going to have uh, four teeth in each corner, so 16 teeth. And they may or may not take a little break from what most of the kids do. And around two, two and a half, closer to three, they're going to get the second molar. So usually we say in general, we uh, look at the, the age a little bit. Uh, by three, they should complete their baby teeth, which is 20 of them. But not everybody's gums or the teeth read textbook and there's a guideline or a range for a purpose it's kind of like the average height or average weight for each uh, class there's not no, nothing wrong or a bad or good or bad if a teeth comes early or late it just everybody is different so take just take it just for reference if your child is early or late don't be too alarming I would follow up with the um, pediatric dentist and just make sure the sequence and the everything else is pretty within normal. But usually if, if your kids is off the reference, uh, don't worry too much about it. So we talked about the number of baby teeth. Uh, there are a total of 20 of them. And gaps are actually very normal uh, in the baby dentition. So a lot of people ask me this, how do we do braces to close those gaps um, at two, three-year-olds? 
Uh, and, you know, like from three all the way to six, the kids take a break with teething, right, Te um, or teeth eruptions. So a lot of kids, um, parents ask me, should we do early intervention around four or five? They're getting older. But let me tell you, don't worry about gaps. You can think of gaps like money in your bank. You're going to use it later because most of the front teeth are bigger and wider than the baby teeth. And around six to seven years old is when your adult front teeth are going to come in and your jaw and your face are, are still a baby face. The growth hasn't ca caught up yet. So at that time, that's kind of an awkward transition. I'll, I'll touch uh, on this later as well. You'll see a big, uh, good picture is um, gaps are good uh, at this age because we're going to use it later. So for teething, uh, some of the common signs are a lot of drooling, a little bit of rashes on the face, that's possible, a little bit of discomfort, but question mark is whether we're going to have more reflux or diarrhea, question mark. No direct science proved the cause um, relationship, but um, a lot of research can show a little bit of correlation because um, the, during this age, teasing is very normal as well. The kids will touch a lot of things, put a lot of things in their mouth, and there's more germs going into our system as well. So there's no direct relationship, but there you could see a little bit of that. But a big no-no for sure is there should not be true high fevers. There could be a little raised temperature, but it's never going to be a true fever. Just letting you know that. A um, little bit about let's look at the lower left hand corner what we could do to help the kids uh, when they're awake you could prepare their normal or their favorite utensils what they're used to if your child take a pacifier or you can um, even take their favorite like snacks right if it's over six months if you're already starting a little bit of solid uh, take a carrot sticks um, cucumber sticks or if you want to freeze your, your solids, your um, puree, um, make it uh, frozen sticks, or you can freeze your, um, your milk, your pump milk, or their teaser, or just a wet cloth, put it into the, the freezer with a little bit of water. And then they can chew as if it's um, cooling and massaging their gum that will help release the symptom. Um, during nighttime, if it's truly uncomfortable, you may lose sleep or you and your little ones. Um, the last resource should be um, Tylenol. So follow the, oh, so sorry. Let me get my, but follow the, um, the dosage on um, your the medication that you acquire don't go above it and if you want to repeat make sure you follow instru instructions usually it's every four to six hours and based on weight so just look at the bottle because different bottle may have different concentrations but follow the weight where there may be a general age guideline so that step um i think i do have a little comment about yeah uh Camellia is a lot of um, parents will ask me that. So when you compare Tylenol Advil versus Camellia, you're kind of looking at it um, as a Western and Chinese medicine kind of a comparison. In Camellia, there's three main, there are three main ingredients that they're all herbal. So there's no direct scientific proof whether Camellia is truly effective or not. But, you know, in my, the family that I come through, um, my care, I find that some do find that it's helpful, whether it's truly really helpful or it's a placebo effect. We don't know, but if you believe in herbal medicine and you want to give it a try, uh, I'm, I'm not a object to it. I'm also not recommending it. Um, just make sure you also follow the dosage directions. Don't, uh, don't overdose it. So um, about eruptions. So eruption cyst is very commonly seen. Uh, you will see a, a bump kind of thing on where the tooth should be coming uh, about its timing. So earlier we kind of touched based on, you know, after the four front teeth comes in, there goes the first perm uh, so first baby molar. So there's a little gap in between. But what's this big, uh, it could be purple, reddish or bluish are the most common colors. What do we do about it? 
Um, we don't do anything about it usually. About, I would say more than 80, 90% of the eruptions is self um, correct. So if you just like what we um, talked about early on about teething, do those things, um, let your kids bite on those things, more massaging time, it will help the teeth erupt through the eruption cyst and there's no uh, drainage necessary and it will just recover back to normal gum. And the timing, it could vary from a week to two, sometimes three, but um, very rarely it goes to four. And when you see eruption cysts in your kid's mouth, usually they don't um, feel discomfort. So like, it'll be an incidental finding, you're cleaning your kid's mouth and you're all of a sudden seeing that, oh, what's that blue thing? And your kid's is eating, drinking okay. And then you'll be like, let me ask my dentist, right? <laughs> so now you know a little bit about that. Um, so situations in baby teeth, what could we see? Sometimes we see one extra tooth. Sometimes we see fused teeth, uh, which means two teeth fused or grow, grow to get, grew together. An extra tooth means that when you count the number, it's actually 21 instead of 20. Uh, so like on the top, this uh, yellow arrow is pointing at an extra two. So if you count from the midline, this one, two, three, and then the pointy canine versus on the other side, it's one, two, and the pointy canine. So that's, there you go, then an extra tooth. And on the bottom, if you count from the midline, it's one big one and the canine. And on the right side, it's one, two, and the big canine. So this big guy is two that group together. So counting is important as well. Um, a lot of times we see, um, especially in Vancouver, we have a lot of um, uh, like Asian um, families that uh, usually, or more commonly Asian family present with a little bit of staining could happen in baby dentitions, uh, usually along the gum line. And I'll talk about it in the, um, later lecture as well, is gum line is actually where we want to focus when we brush their teeth. And if, think of it as a big table. If you're cleaning the big table, it's really easy to clean the countertop. But a lot of times the dust or the dirty pots are, you know, hiding around the corner and that's where we miss quite often, right? So similar ideas. In this picture, you can also see what I just talked about is the gaps in between, in between baby teeth. And this is what I will say, great, this is a textbook teeth. You'll, you'll be happy about it later. Um, missing teeth, it's also possible. So you see there's a big gaps and also missing teeth over here. Uh, but when... When do we start flossing? So I get asked a lot about this question as well. There's no specific age about when we should start flossing. It's more so depending on the dentition. Um, I've seen six months old baby teeth come in just the two little ones in the front already crowded and overlapped, right? So in those situations, I'll tell the parents you should start flossing. Um, and then there's another side of the spectrum where um, a four, four year old still has really big gaps in between all the teeth. Then I, I would tell the parents that, you know, flossing at this time is not as critical. However, I would say around one to two would be a good time to introduce it, whether or not you actually need it, whether there's tight contact or not, introduce it early on will help. Um, transition or desensitize the kids into um, the routine later on when you actually need it. Or actually, another thing is if you see a con, um, an area, even though there's um, a good space, but you constantly see food stock in there, which is possible, my, my daughter has one area that's like that, then you will just include the flossing, and more, pay more attention to that specific area. Um, let me just move my little... So trauma. So trauma is very common under age three. Okay, why they are, so like in between one or two, they are learning how to walk. They have a little bit of teeth. So on the very left side, this is a very young um, child. And you see on this tooth, it's already about halfway erupted, but this one was pushed in because the fall happened like that. So that particular tooth got pushed in. Another side note from, from trauma when I see this picture is 
teeth does not teeth don't usually come symmetrically. So when when I see this child without parent telling me the history, um, I will ask how it was looking. Uh, do we have any fall or lately? If not, then we will wait because as long as the teeth erupts across the midline, uh, relatively in between six months, uh, we still call it or consider it somewhat symmetrical. So don't worry about particularly how come my right, the right cent center teeth are in for one or two months already, but the other side doesn't have any signs. I would say just give it a little time. Um, in the middle case, um, it's a little combination of topics. So this child um, is a big uh, thumb sucker. So teeth and the jaw can also change in shape uh, with prolonged uh, sucking. But not all the kids will, uh, with the sucking habit will have the changes because it depends on the, the longevity, uh, the time of the day, the total time of the day that the kid is sucking. Um, the forces they're sucking also matters a lot as well. So in this case, you can see the upper two teeth are quite flared out. So in this case, because the upper teeth are, um, they're singled out in the front as a little island. When kids fell in between, um, you know, around two, three years old, it's really, um, it really increases their risk for dental trauma. So like in this case, you see fracture. And a lot of times, let's look at this x-ray on the right side. After a fall, it may or may not look like there's anything wrong, but at your next dental checkups, I would mention it to your dentist and, and, and maybe it's time for a little bit of x-ray because uh, if you look at this area, this tooth from the outside, you won't see any different, but on the x-ray, you see a, um, a black line across the almost the apex of this tooth and that's a horizontal fracture. So the root and the bone has separated into two pieces, right? So these things are worth noticing and worth picking up as um, um, a, a prevention or to talk about expectations and what to care for and what to expect in the future when the adult teeth comes in. Um, another very common uh, um, thing we see is bruxism, meaning the teeth, um, the kids are somewhere a little bit uh, grinding a little bit. So the research um, shows that about 30% of the kids uh, below age six do grind and various degree, 30 to 60, uh, 30 to 60% 60 actually depends on the, the research. So that's quite a lot of them. And research also shows that about um, two thirds of them will self uh, results. So during growth, there's there are a few different theories in terms of why kids uh, grind. Why do we see it so often? I'm not gonna you know talk about all of them right now. But what I want to tell you guys is um, don't don't worry too much about it. Um, when we pick up the sign of teasing, we see uh, a pretty flat line in, um, at their occlusion occlusal level meaning where the teeth meets together because of function because of how their teeth are grinding um, mostly at night you'll see this flat line but baby teeth the nerves are really uh, responsive so as the teeth are gradually being ground down the nerve is also uh, receding so that's why most of the kids they do not present with any symptom when you see the signs of teasing or sorry grinding and in this case, I would say it's a, a mild to moderate case. Uh, very, very, very rarely we do see a sick, severe attrition or severe grinding causing um, irritation to the nerve. That's when grinding is so um, fast and severe that the nerve didn't have enough time to, to cut off or to recede to prevent those sensitivity, then you could see a little bit of abscess, meaning slow, uh, small infection starting. But that's very, very super duper rare. <laughs> so again, uh, just follow with your, um, your dentist and, and don't worry too, too much about this. So we'll follow up and monitor these teeth for you guys. Um, now, ne ne next, we're going to talk about mixed dentition, meaning when the adult teeth comes in, usually it's their first molar. 
and first molar comes behind all the baby teeth. So a lot of parents don't even know when they come and see me, I say, hey, there's a new tooth coming in, but it's all the way in the back. But parents will say, oh, but uh, Johnny didn't uh, lose any teeth yet. So let me tell you, the six years old tooth, where uh, the, the, the nickname of that tooth is six years old tooth, which is the first permanent molar that comes behind all the baby teeth. And the second permanent molar comes around 12. And the third molar, which is more commonly known as wisdom tooth, comes around 18. So those three permanent molars do not replace any um, baby teeth. Uh, next, I'm gonna talk about the major differences between a baby and the adult teeth. So this is important in terms of when we trim and plan, when we treat cavity, even though the cavity present in the exact same size, a lot of times it will be treated differently in baby teeth versus adult teeth. And I'll tell you a little bit of why. So in general, you can um, see the side of this adult tooth is more parallel along the, the crown and the roots, right? On those two sides, they're pretty parallel versus this is a true baby tooth. So the crown is quite contoured or convex. And then during the neck where the tooth meet, the, the crown meets the root, there, there, there's your uh, waist, right? So it goes in and then, and then uh, down to the root. So this concav con con convexity uh, is why Sometimes we treat um, baby teeth with crowns instead of uh, large, large um, fillings because leakage can happen around the neck area. And the next major differences is you see how um, in the middle, this is the nerve space and there's two pointy area on the top and that's a high pulp, high nerve area. So, um, Decay, especially in between the teeth, if you can see my cursor, it happens around this area. So it doesn't need to take uh, too big of a cavity to be very close to the nerve. So this is also why x-ray is so important. The next major difference is where the roots are forming and how the dimension of it is. So on the adult, on the adult tooth, you see there, again, they're a little bit more parallel, but on the baby tooth, it's like umbrella. So it goes like this. And the adult tooth buds and develop right in the center uh, of, the, of those uh, divert root. So um, the next major differences, which is the last one I'm going to mention, is there's more what we call accessory canals present in the baby teeth, which means when um, infection starts, it goes into the nerve. And it goes right in between, in the middle of those three roots versus in the adult teeth, it goes, starts from the nerve, goes all the way down to the apex, to the end of the nerve. So this is a, a sign or a typical thing we look for on the x-ray. So a lot of um, the dentists will miss that, that the differences between the baby teeth and adult teeth and how to diagnose when things are happening. Um, so we talked a little bit about this. <laughs> one, one very common question again is when the, when the adult teeth starts to come in the, in the middle, you'll see uh, wavy edges and this is called mammalong and very common. We all had it when we were little and with function, with eating, it just gradually got worn down appropriately. Okay, not significant like what we call grinding, but the normal amount of wear. The other thing we can see from this picture is uh, um, in the textbook, it literally is called the ugly duckling stage because things are going to change. So we talked change. We, we talked about the differences, the difference um, between the size differences between the baby and adult teeth, right? So uh, around six to eight years or almost to nine years old, the front teeth are, you know, they come in one by one but the growth in the width of the jaw is, is still a baby one. So usually around nine years old is when we'll see a, a more significant growth in the width. And at that time, 
you'll see changes. The teeth will slowly align itself. But uh, I say that it doesn't mean that every case will self um, correct itself, right? So sometimes there's a huge difference in the size differences. Sometimes the um, the gum is too narrow or, you know, there's a lot of um, things comes in play when we talk about assessing for crowding uh, or the need for orthodontics. So this is just a really uh, broad general thing that we all see. But again, um, just follow through with your uh, dentist and know in the back of your mind that this is something that we all expect it and don't worry too too much when you see a little bit of teeth overlapping around this early transition time. Um, so with, with what we call the size differences, a lot of time you'll see people call, call it shark teeth. Uh, a, a quick general guideline when we see shark teeth, well, what I tell the parents, um, the first thing is when you see the second row of teeth coming in or two, the first tooth coming in, uh, touch your baby tooth, touch the baby tooth in the front of that um, adult tooth. If it's already mobile, wiggle a little bit of wiggly, I'm not too concerned about it. Just start wiggling and help that tooth uh, fill out sooner. Our tongue is a very strong muscle, believe it or not. It rests against the, the back of the teeth. When we talk, when we're articulating, when we're sleeping, um, the tongue is just very slowly, uh, gently resting at the back of those teeth. And that's enough forces to move the teeth forward into the space that um, you'll have after the baby teeth fall out. Um, and why is this so common? Because think of it as an um, iceberg in, in the ocean. So you see the tip of iceberg, but there's a big chunk of it underneath you don't see. And our jaw is just really this amount of tall. So if you have a long root, how could the baby teeth, I mean, we're talking about, about the front one. So we, we, I told you guys that the, the back ones develop in between those roots. But the front one, they, they have to somewhat slightly overlap when they de develop. So that's why when the adult teeth erupts, it goes up and forward, up and forward, and slowly um, exfoliate or push out the baby tooth on the, uh, in the front. So if in this direction, you see the little tip of it, but your baby tooth is very mobile, I know that the adult tooth has enough forward forces. However, when, um, so usually I, I, teach, I teach my parents how to help uh, wiggle the teeth out. Um, but uh, some cases when they tell me, okay, little Johnny is really not eating well. She, he's refusing to eat this or that or really, really sensitive. Then I'll say, okay, I'll help it, right? Because I'm not in this for, uh, you know, to, to get treatment and get payment, but it's a lot of fun working with kids and this is a good pro progress, right? This is your first one and we're going to have 20 more wiggle twos, right? Do I need to pull all of them out, right? So I usually teach them when this happens so we can really set the expectations and, um, um, and kind of ease the kids into this transition. But some cases you can see on the right side, it's very crowded. Um, the American Association, Association of Orthodontists do, uh, does recommend the first orthodontics evaluation happens around six, seven to eight. And a consultation does not mean that you will have ortho treatment right away, but it's a good timing to start establishing this relationship with an orthodontist and he or she will follow up uh, periodically, sometimes it's every nine months, every uh, 12, sometimes um, a year and a half, depends on the situation. And for growth checkup as well, so um, the pediatric dentist and orthodontist will work together as a team for a comprehensive care for your child. Okay, so next uh, pretty common thing we see is called diastema. So diastema, so we talked about memolon earlier on. Diastema means the gaps in, be, in between baby teeth, uh, sorry, in between teeth. And it's common uh, in between the adult center front teeth as well. So you can see this gap. And the study have shown that if the gap, gap is uh, within two millimeters, 80% of them 
do self-close. And how do they self-close? So this is initially when the center teeth comes, you'll see, you may see a little gap. But when this, uh, the side tooth, the lateral tooth comes in, you consolidate a little bit. But most of the consolidation will happen when the adult canine push uh, canines push it, push in, and that happens around 11 to 12. So don't jump in too early and worry too, too much about the small gaps in between um, adult teeth. But obviously, um, if your child is really concerned about it, it, it affects he, um, his or her uh, self-esteem, or there's other reason. Uh, if your child is being bullied at, at school, really concerned about the, the aesthetic, sure, we can close that, no problem, pretty easy. But uh, what I'm saying is you don't necessarily have to spend extra money at this early stage to go through two phases of, uh, of braces in the, um, for your child. So this is a quick picture to, um, to see that the uh, six year molar, 12 year molar and the wisdom teeth comes behind the baby teeth. And we talked a little bit about how the front teeth, the front adult teeth are wider than the uh, front baby teeth. The adult um, premolars replace the baby molars are thinner uh, than the baby molars. So in this case, we call it, uh, we'll, we'll, have, we'll gain a little bit of a space when the back teeth transitions as well. So the back teeth transition around 10 to 12 years old. If your front teeth really look like there's a little bit of crowding, could, little, could need a little bit more space, there's our second chance. We'll have a, a little bit more space when the premolar comes in around 10 to 12. So um, a lot of times, in situations where we can wait until all the adult teeth come in to treat uh, to treat a crowding with braces, that's another reason. Um, during mixed dentition, meaning when the adult teeth comes in, uh, we do also see some common um, issues or questions. Is if you look at the uh, left hand X-ray, you'll see this tooth is kind of somewhat wedged under or tucked in. This is called ectopic eruption, meaning it went through a different direction. And very interestingly, 66% of the, the a first permanent molar that are ectopic do self-correct themselves as well. So you see the middle picture. This is, we didn't do any intervention, go from uh, the left picture to the middle picture, self-correct. We didn't do anything. So um, as long as it's, um, so I said that it comes around six to seven. So usually we wait until seven, seven and a half to assess and monitor it and see how it changes with time because you will see your dentist every six months. And if it truly is getting worse, then we do jump in. But if I see that it's on the way of self-correcting, then we'll, you know, I'll tell you, don't, don't worry about it. So on the right-hand corner, that's another trial where, this is time for us to jump in. So another thing that if you look at the middle picture, this is a case that is self-corrected, you'll see a big shadow on the left-hand corner of this root. Um, this, we usually don't have to um, extract a tooth just because there's a little resorption here. Most of the time, the, the baby tooth stays asymptomatic until it exfoliates. So pretty amazing. Our body is pretty amazing, right? So another um, situation where it could um, happen with ectopic eruption is it could um, come more uh, towards the cheek side or more towards the tongue side. So you'll see uh, something like this. So obviously you'll let us um, help you and guide you in terms of how to deal with those kind of situations. The next common question that I encounter is why do my baby's um, adult teeth look so yellow? Am I not feeding my kids well? Do I need to change my diet? Am I not brushing well? Should I change my toothpaste? Um, this is another common uh, question I pretty much encounter every day. Um, the adult teeth are in general uh, darker and more yellower than baby teeth because uh, teeth has three layers, right? So enamel is the outside, dentin is the middle and the nerve is in the center. So adult teeth have a much thicker dentin layer and dentin uh, by natural is more yellow. So when they're during 
uh, the transition when the adult teeth are side by side right next to the, the baby teeth, you will see it present a little bit more yellow. But once the teeth are all done changing, you'll, you won't notice it anymore. It will all match. So um, a lot of times parents ask me, should we whiten uh, my, my kids teeth? I want, I want a hollow a smile. I'll tell, I'll tell parents, don't, don't just wait for it yet. Cause if we whiten the teeth, it will not match later on. It will look um, not as aesthetically present. Uh, and that's why uh, baby teeth are also ca called milk teeth because they are truly very white like pearls. <laughs> okay. So why are baby teeth important if they're just going to eventually fill out? So first of all, um, so we talked about the timeline, right? So some of the big baby teeth in the back will stay in the mouth until all the way to 12. So healthy teeth will allow our kids to, to eat healthy, right? Healthy diet, able to chew well. Good oral hygiene means good permanent teeth growth. So um, long story short is when the teeth are getting cavities in between, you'll have structure loss and eventually the two teeth will move closer together. And that's when you face space loss. So if we have space loss, the adult front teeth are already wider. You'll have even more crowding. If, if it's the back teeth, you may be okay because the adult premolars are smaller, but if you really leave it untreated, the space loss will be significant and you, you will see a lot of crowding later on, even if these uh, premolars are smaller. Um, healthy baby teeth also benefits the growth of the facial bone because if we have to um, extract the infected tooth, um, well, actually the, the bone grows better and taller with the roots in place. So that's why you see a lot of seniors if they're wearing dentures, missing a lot of teeth, their ridges, their gums uh, shrinks into very small, small and short part. And that's because there's no root structure in there. However, if your child um, needs to get an extraction, it's better to do it instead of worried about the bone growth because it's more important to keep the mouth healthy. Meaning if there's an indication for extractions, the health of the or environment is more important. So prevention of cavities in childhood also avoid toothaches, infections, and also fear for visiting the dentist in the future. So I like to say prevention is my passion is why we uh, step foot in the um, pediatric world is, is lots of prevention is truly necessary. Lots and lots of kids miss school. Um, I can't quantify it, but there's lots of research about this because kids are having toothaches at school. Uh, infections and those really truly link to anxiety, uh, visiting the dentist and study have shown links. If you have positive experience in your childhood, you'll have more motivations um, to care for your own teeth throughout your lifetime into adulthood. So you'll, you're more likely to care for your teeth and have more regular dental visits in the future. Um, yeah. Okay. So some teeth do stay until 12. So, um, and by 12, you already have quite a lot of adult teeth in the front and cavities, um, happens because of multiple reasons, but one of them is bacteria. So bacteria can jump in between side to side in the mouth. So if you have, um, um, big cavities in the baby molar in the back that's left untreated, you're putting your adult, uh, new adult front teeth also at risk. So um, the American Association of Pediatric Dentistry, as well as the Canadian ones, do recommend the first dental visit at age one. And that's my, my daughter's first uh, dental visit. Um, why do we do that and what to expect in those um, first dental visit? So I'll just go down the list. So first of all, oral hygiene will show kids how to brush the teeth and mostly show the parents how to brush their kids' teeth as well, because not all the kids like um, the routine. And then we'll talk about how to help them. Um, and we talked about injuries to tooth, um, to baby teeth are quite common around one to two um, years old as well. There's different types of injury and we'll talk about when will be called an emergency, when will be the situations uh, you can wait until the next business day to come in and we'll take a look. 
um, diet, we'll talk about what's the recommended uh, portion, timing, and how do we introduce, because um, it's not practical to not have any sugar in the child's diet. We all know that. So we, but we need to introduce it in a healthy way. Um, and we also talk about the frequency versus quantity. And we'll just briefly talk about it. The frequency is way more important than quantity because if today we have say three cookies, I'd rather a child eats that three little cookies uh, in a snack time versus one cookie every hour because your pH in your mouth will constantly stay low because that cookie goes, um, pH goes down. And once your saliva buffers a little bit, it goes down again, buffers a little bit and goes down again. So cavity can form throughout those time versus if you solid consolidate those snack time with the same amount of snack, your pH go down, but right after it goes up and the timing of your, your oral environment sits in those acidic um, pH is much um, shorter. So growth and development, we do also look at that, you know, the, the growth of the jaw, the face, the overall profile, and other things. Um, as long as you, uh, you have questions, you can bring it to your, to your dentist. We also encourage fluoride use. Um, the guideline also recommends starting by age one, we should use a fluoride toothpaste. So, but a lot of the toothpaste you can find over the counter on the market says it's recommended for age three and above. So uh, we don't know why the manufacturer says that on the, on the packaging, but I'm pretty sure 100% positive I recommend you to, to switch to a fluoride toothpaste as soon as the first tooth erupts into your baby's mouth. But what we really truly need to pay attention is the amount of fluoride toothpaste that you're applying. So below age three, it's um, a smear layer or a little rice size. You don't need more than that. Uh, three to six, you can switch to pea size. Um, so as long as you're staying within those amount, um, I can talk a lot about fluoride, uh, but I assure you it's very, very, very safe amount. You're way, 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 way below the threshold for any toxicity level. Uh, we also um, help you understand how to strengthen the oral health, um, how, and so in, in between all the diet, the position, and how to help you establish the routine, uh, we, uh, we help you um, create this or health habits. And we also help you and talk about how to wing the pacifier and the thumb sucking habits. Most importantly, uh, during this first visit, we, we talk more uh, with the parents and mostly let the child play and get used to the environment. And we welcome them into their dental home. And if you have any questions, you'll always have access to your dental home versus coming backwards as an emergency or really want to, to be fit in as an urgent case when, when your child is um, having discomfort. So a little bit about how do we prepare your child for their first visit. Uh, first of all is, is very important is to stay positive and cheerful because a lot of us will have um, small anxiety to the dentist ourselves or even a little bit of us will have uh, some negative experience, but don't um, expose that to your child and really keep it positive so we can prepare them uh, positively when they're at our environment as well. And the other thing is don't threaten yourself that we're going to pull their teeth if they're not listening or we're going to uh, poke them with a needle. Don't, don't mention in, any of those big words um, and, and don't let us be the bad guy either. <laughs> um, just really stay positive. You can explain how things um, should, should go, steps, or what to, to expect by reading uh, pictures or books. Um, there are some cartoons or videos about the dental visits as well, where you can do role playing with their favorite um, uh, doll or stuffed animals. And that will really um, help them. It's another way of desensitization. Um, and, and another thing is to remember every child is so different, um, to set our expectation right and don't, um, don't be frustrated or 
discouraged when your child uh, doesn't walk in really happily, sit in their chair right away, open, open uh, wide and big for me to take a look. Uh, every child is so different. That's why we start them young so we can see where they're at and we work with them along the way until they're comfortably um, happily in the chair for prevention uh, procedures. Um, visit the dentist in the morning will help the little ones and they're more energetic, but you know your child the best. So if you want um, to book a visit, uh, book it at the time where you know your child will have the most energy. So bring their favorite toy or stuffy so they can feel comfortable and somewhat familiar. And the last um, but not least is you can visit the website of your, your dental visit uh, or the dental um, office that you prefer. Show them the faces of those um, staff. So the, the assistants, the hygienist, the dentist. And then so when they see us, it will not be a complete stranger. So um, I know that we are a little over time now. Uh, I'll just show you a little bit about what cavity can look like. So this is all I see every day in a one to two, three year old. So things can happen slow sometimes, but it could also progress pretty fast. Okay, so I'm just gonna six skip over um, flossing uh, is so important. So you can see along the gum line, those um, cavity starts with what we call the calcification, changing color, become softer. And this is what we see in between. So we can visualize this only um, after this tooth, baby tooth fell out. So we have the, um, the opportunity to, to observe it. Otherwise we only rely on the x-ray. So I'll, I'll just, this will be my last slide is you can see on this x-ray, a little bit of shadow is starting in between the teeth, very subtle. huh? But on the left side, there's nothing. You cannot see anything, but only you can see the teeth are touching tightly together. So when the teeth are tight and when the child is ready, we'll say, hey, let's take a um, baseline x-rays just to observe. And if we don't see anything, the, the risk guideline will place your child in a low risk area and we don't repeat the x-ray um, often, maybe 12 to 18 months. But if we do see small things starting, then we need to monitor closely because things progress a lot faster. Uh, from that to a little bit of tunnel to a big football um, decay, and we can see how close it is to the nerve. So decay can progress pretty fast and sometimes you don't see it in the mouth. Okay, so um, these are the common, um, sorry, <laughs> Chelsea, do I have, can I use maybe one more minute to talk about the x-ray? Yeah, no problem. Okay, um, so stainless steel crown is quite common if we see huge cavities. They uh, serve the, the best longevity for the baby teeth until they fell out. Um, space maintainer, and also, if you look at the x-ray on the left side, on the outside, you may not see anything. But over here, you see kind of an odd shape here, and that's an extra tooth. So extra adult tooth needs to be dealt with appropriately timing, timing-wise uh, to assess. So for this patient, he or she has two extra teeth. So we can't really wait and tell them those teeth erupt to to, to deal with them because the space what adult teeth will be really um, off the, the plant. Or a lot of times the, the extra, to, extra tooth is pointing upside down and it will never erupt, right? So the, about the x-ray, a lot of parents will worry uh, about radiation, but a lot of times you forgot that we do experience a lot of background radiation in our daily lives. For example, eating a banana, it's this unit, one dental x-ray is about that unit. And for a child's back teeth, if we see tight tightness, we do take two of them. So not too much more than a few bananas. And if you walk outside in a sunny Vancouver, it's about the same as a few dental x-rays. Um, and if you take a trip from uh, Canada to Hawaii, that's way more um, radiation than, than the little dental x-ray. So um, 
lastly, touch base on diet. So I do recommend just water or uh, your breast milk or um, full uh, through uh, whole milk uh, before age two, because any of those little, um, even when the percentage are showing low, there's lots and lots of sugar in there. For example, let's look at this middle one. It says 100% orange juice, but you really do need to like take a look at the labels very carefully. So 11 tablespoon is, is a lot of sugar. So can you imagine dumping 11 tablespoon on a, a measuring uh, on the way and then have your child chuck the whole uh, whole jar of um, sugar? Well, you do that never, right? But you don't visualize it when we're providing um, those sugary drinks. So no juice before age two, um, below age six, uh, no more than six, uh, six ounces when they're older. Um, sports drink also has a lot of sugar, so, okay. Um, this is just um, my, my Instagram page. I was gonna show you a lot of the, um, the samples or how I, I help my kids um, establish their routines, but you can also hop on there and take a look at, your, uh, look at them yourself. I won't take more time, so we can have more time for a little bit um, of questions right now. Thank you so much for your sharing your knowledge with us today, Dr. Raylan. Um, I guess we'll get to questions now. Um, I will read other questions to you and you can respond. Okay, so we have someone here looking for tips for how to get a child to allow flossing. He insists on trying to do it himself. <laughs> um, I think doing themselves is not a bad thing because they're playing, they, they think of it as a positive thing. What I would do is make sure you let your child know that you can take your parent at uh, your child's turn, but you have to let mom the parent or the adult helps. So there's your, your turn and there's adult terms. So, but to, to, to really put it into perspective, even for brushing, we need to physically do it for them until age eight. So even okay. when they're, they look like they're able to, you know, physically do it, they may look like they're doing a good job, but their dexterity, their hand skills are not good. So uh, for flossing, I would make sure that you give them the two sets of um, set time. Either you do it first, I do it first, and you can do your turn. So let them play. Don't um, stop them from doing that, but do let them know they have to set the boundary. We have to have an adult term before or after that. Okay, good to know. Okay, we have another question here. How can I encourage teeth brushing for my three-year-old? He fights it, and when he does it, he just sucks on the toothbrush. If I do it for him, he hates it so much, I have to force it. I see. Okay, so a couple different ways. Uh, depends on your child's personality. Uh, some kids do um, get used to the routine, so it's kind of like my child. My Jane is my older one. She, she really, really don't like um, wiping her butt, but do I let it go dirty when she has number two? I cannot because that's my boundary. That has to happen. Bath time. Okay. You don't I have to, if you really don't want to, you know, you can skip a day or whatever, but you cannot not bath forever. So we need to let our child know that this is necessary. So we need to let them know this is our routine. It has to happen. So if your child is really stubborn, uh, be persistent. You may get discouraged from time to time, but be persistent and don't get discouraged if you cannot do a full mouth beautifully done. Little progress is progress. So if you can only do a little corner, do for 10, 20 seconds, and each day you set, start at a different corner. So you're kind of rotating and, um, you know, trying to do the best you can and each time you increase your your um your your time um the other thing is each day is so different a toddlers they their favorite thing is so different each day do what they like the day off so if you allow a little bit of screen time so like with my older one we went no screen time all the way till she's two and then she starts just exactly like you were mentioning um, refusing a little bit, um, 
for our bedtime routine. So I started just a little bit of um, video of um, either our, our, ourselves or FaceTime with families or like a tooth for educational videos that you want to show them or a cartoon is totally fine too, no judgment at all uh, to limit to that time. So they know and they, they will focus on the top. And if you go on my Instagram, I'll also show other things you can help to distract, like and you can tickle their feet when they're laying down and they'll, ah, and then they'll be open really big. And it's okay to take, uh, take, take time off as well. So like if you can only sit them down for 30 seconds, you brush the bottom and now let them play a little bit, switch to a different thing that their um, attention is at right now, have them lay down and, and brush the top. So Another thing is I, I really encourage you to train them uh, to, to help establish the routine in a lay down position because like flossing will be quite challenging to do it upside down. The cheeks are all pretty close to the teeth and it's pretty dark back there. So if you can lay them down, you'll have a lot of um, visuals. Okay, and, great. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time today, Dr. Raylan, and sharing your knowledge with us today. After today's session, I will be sending out a recording of the entire presentation, as well as responses to any of the questions that we didn't get to today. Thank you everyone for your time. Have a good day.